Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. Today is the Feast of Holy Trinity. It's a very special day in the Benefice as we hold our main service in Holy Trinity Church, Ascot under Witchwood, on this their Dedication Sunday. And as we worship today, whether in person or online, we give thanks for the invitation that God offers to us all to join in the loving dance of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Sarah is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Today, as you know, is Trinity Sunday, when we're invited to consider one of the most theologically demanding of our beliefs. It's a way of thinking and speaking about God in a way that defies our normal understanding. We're not helped by the fact that the word Trinity does not appear in Scripture. Instead, we infer the existence of a Trinitarian God from various passages in the Bible. For example, the threefold nature of God is cited in the Great Commission in Matthew's Gospel. When the disciples are told to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. On the basis of these indications, and after some pretty intense debates, the early church adopted the Trinity as doctrine, that we believe in one God, and that God is three persons in one substance. It's a truth that we can somehow grasp, and yet not be able to understand, all at the same time. But as we said many times before, it's a mystery to be wondered at and embraced, rather than a puzzle to work out and solve. And yet, even while we recognise the mystery and unknowability of God, 
we often try to form a picture of what the persons of the Trinity might look like. In the case of the Father and the Son, we may struggle to think of them as anything other than human male figures, albeit with divine natures. But what of the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit? This seems to be the person in the Trinitarian God that we find most difficult to picture in our heads. But why should that be? Is it just because we can only imagine God in our own image, a reversal of the teaching in Genesis that God made humankind in his? Well, part of the problem seems to be that the Bible gives us either too few or too many clues as to how we can imagine the Spirit. For example, in Genesis, we read that the Spirit of God passes over the face of the waters at the beginning of creation in the form of a wind or breath, ruach in Hebrew. And throughout the Old Testament, it is the inspiration of the prophets. The Spirit appears at the baptism of Christ, descending like a dove. The Spirit is seen as the force behind the miracles of Jesus in Mark and exorcism in Matthew. The Spirit comes as a rushing, mighty wind at Pentecost, but also as Christ's gentle breath upon the disciples when he visits them in the locked room. So we're given several images to give shape to our conception of the Spirit, including wind, breath, fire and dove. They're all ways of picturing the divine God living among us, and perhaps they demand more from us than the more mundane human conceptions of Father and Son. And we shouldn't forget that the Spirit can be invisible, even as it's felt in its power. Paul, for example, tells us that Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of the Spirit, that the Spirit of Christ dwells in believers and urges us to pray to Abba the Father. Thus we are told, by image and by word, that the Spirit is an advocate, guide and inspiration. The Spirit is the mediator between God and his creation, between the divine and the human, between heaven and earth. The gift of the Spirit is also, in all its forms, nothing less than the creative power of God, which lives in us, brings us together in our belief, our church, and our care for the world and each other. But this is not a domesticated spirit, easily compartmentalized as a, as a breath or a flame in the same way as it's easy to relax into the idea of the father as a, a kindly old man in the clouds or the son as a friend or martyr. As Jesus says to Nicodemus, the wind blows where it chooses we do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. God is free and compassionate, and all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. But God is God. The Spirit goes where it chooses, and we cannot know where, and we cannot control it. And we must not try to constrain his nature, by the limits of our own imaginations. And this, I think, is the good news. As God is free, so the indwelling of the Spirit in us makes us free, if we accept the invitation to be drawn into the family of God within the Trinity, that endless divine movement of self-giving and love that goes where it chooses and we know not where. Amen.
Deborah is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. The response to the petition, may your will be done, is on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray to the Father through the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, may the church reflect your community and unity. May there be godly harmony, shared ministry, mutual support and encouragement in the faith. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the world's leaders seek not personal power but the public good. May conflicts be faced honestly and needs recognised and met. May all our communities be built on what is good, true, just and right. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may there be love and respect for one another in every household. May there be mutual support and thoughtfulness, consideration and trust. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the heart's cries for help be heard, the tears collected and the fears quieted. May suffering be eased and guilt erased through your healing love. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the dead rise to new and eternal life, freed from their aching and restored forever. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, we pour out to you our praise and wonder at the hidden mysterious holiness of your being, so full of glory and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to God through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be, be with, with you. you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. There will be another online service next Sunday. Details will be on the bulletin and the Benefits website. For those who can join us in person, there will also be services at Enstone at 8 a.m., and Spellsbury at 10 a.m. And so our service ends now with a blessing. May God the Father who created you keep you safely within his eternal love. May God the Son who came to save you walk with you on your journey of faith. May God the Holy Spirit who lives within you strengthen and encourage you and fill you with the love and light of God. And may the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen.